Hey guys, it's Tries here, and we're getting the most horsepower out of this naturally aspirated inline 3 engine. This is a new season of getting the most power out of every engine in the latest Ellisbury update of Automations version 4.3. So for this engine build, you start off by going to the top left portion of your screen and maximize the year to the year of 2020. After doing that and selecting the inline 3 engine, you may choose the aluminum billet engine block material for this build, which is the best in terms of power density for all the other block materials. And for the engine bore, you maximize this to 120mm, and for the stroke, just lower this a little bit to 85.7mm, which gets the family engine size to 2,908 cubic centimeters, or 2.9 liters. And we're gonna be using a dual overhead cam 5 valve made out of aluminum silicon. And for the quality slider for everything, you maximize this to a plus 15 for everything. For the engine in general, bottom end, top end, the exhaust, fuel system, and for everything. And same thing down here for the sandbox tech pool, this little box here. You click on that to bring up this window here, and you maximize the engine tech for the bottom end, like the engine, to a plus 15, the bottom end to a plus 15, the top end 15, fuel system's a 15, and lastly, the exhaust system, maximize this bad boy. If you got these selected to a plus 15, maximizing its quality, you click on Apply Changes and we'll head on over to the bottom end. So with the new Ellisbury update with the variant capacity, first of all, right here, is that you can upboard the engine by an additional 3 millimeters at the most. So we're going to be doing so by setting the engine bore for the family capacity, or variant capacity, at 123 millimeters and keeping the stroke as is to 85.7 millimeters, which increases it by 147 cubic centimeters for this particular engine. And for the crank cow rods and pistons, we'll be using pretty much the best ones out of all of them. So a regular billet steel crankshaft with some titanium cod rods and some lightweight forged pistons, and we'll be requiring a balancing shaft for the balancing mass with the counterweight maxed out to a 220, which maximizes it by around 17.4 pounds to counterweight. The compression and the cam profile, they are both maxed out, so for the compression, put this to an extreme level of a 16.0 to 1 ratio, with the cam profile, like I said, a full bone racing setting at 100, with the springs and lifters, increases to a 66, with some VVT for all cams, and the RPM limit, you set this to a pretty high 9100 RPM. And skip it over to turbocharger because it is naturally aspirated, so for the fuel system, it'll be a direct injection throttle for cylinder race to take with the manifold size set to a 55. The type of fuel we're using is a good old dragster fuel, nitromethane, with the ignition timing margin below this to a negative 5, which advances it as much as possible, but put this to the left. And the fuel mapping lowered this quite a bit to a lean setting at a 28. And finally, for the headers of this engine, we're going to be choosing the good old tubular racing headers with the header size set the slider at a 62, with the exhaust size set to 57.1 millimeters, which equals to 2.25 inches. And finally, no cats, no mufflers, and finally, bring up the exhaust quality. And we get the final horsepower rating of 1,399.2 horsepower at 9100 RPM, and a torque value of 807.5 pounds feet of torque at 9100 RPM. So right away, with this engine, we got the pistons, like, big time stress in terms of the torque at 99% of reliability reduction, pretty much it's on our last life up in here, as it is rated up to 646 pounds feet of torque. And as we can see here in terms of reliability, the reliability threshold we're at is a 0 0.3. As long as it's not at a 0, 0.0, the engine will run here in automation and in beam and G drive. And with this new update of the game, unlike with version 4.2 where I could do some fake gear shifts with this new dyno screen, the best I'm going to do is pretty much just do a quick dyno pull and probably some like detailed analytics by manually doing the throttle and the RPM target and call this a day. So let's do a quick dyno pull and see how this works out.
was my piss poor attempt of doing the fake gear shifts like I used to, and you could use to, in version 4.2 of automation, unlike the current 4.3, where it's impossible to do that. If you want a powerful engine that doesn't take up a lot of space, this may be a great option for you. It makes nearly 14 horsepower and has a terrible reliability rating, making it an excellent drag racing engine that's only good for the strip, but not for the streets. Even though it beam and G went export in this engine, it doesn't explode upon using it for any reason, meaning that you shouldn't run into any problems when driving any car in beam and G with this engine. So anyways, that'll do it with Automation, the Car Company Tycoon Games version 4.3, aka the Ellisbury Update. And for those who are interested in this type of content, please be sure to like and subscribe so you won't miss out on any videos like this in the future. So this is Tries Rising Up, and signing out.